Hey everybody, Jeff from Corrugated Cavalier here. I uh, wanted to show you another project that I'm starting. I'm starting to make my own wooden buckler. And this is uh, kind of based off of the video that, well, the video series really, that Roland Varseca did for making a Viking shield. Um, and some other videos um, that I found as well on YouTube. And um, so I'm actually using pallet wood just to save a little bit of money um luckily there's like a whole sub subdivision being built by me and uh i asked if i could grab a couple of the pallets that they had so uh free wood is always good however the boards were a little bit thick um they actually from the little bit of research in the videos that i've watched we, we want like no more than about 12 mil even in the center of a shield and even though i'm making a buckler i'm still trying to uh go to those specifications and i'm also doing it kind of as practice uh before i uh do a bigger shield so what i've actually been doing uh after i cut these boards down to about the size that i wanted i've been planing off some of the excess material to make them thinner and i've been doing it by hand with my handy draw knife um, it's a lot of work but it's actually coming along pretty well and uh, you can see the difference in thickness so it's actually taking off quite a bit of material and I'm hoping that this will save some weight so I'm just gonna give you a, a quick video on how I'm doing that this is probably not the best way to do it and um, Nobody make too much fun of my table either. <laughs> it's what I got. Um, so I'm showing just uh, how you can do this with a few tools. Let's get to it. Okay, so this is a live look into my first time ever using hide glue. I'm probably being way too sloppy, um, <laughs> but that's okay. We'll figure it out. This is, this is practice. Um, I also sanded down the face of the boards a little bit before I started this. Um, and I've got wax paper so it doesn't stick to the table. I'm sure I'll have to deal with some wax paper um, being stuck to the boards, but that's okay. So it seems pretty easy to use so far. I'm being a little bit messy, but... And the working time seems pretty short on this. This is uh, one of the higher strength high glues. It's not the, the lowest one. Uh, it's 250 or something like that I think figured since I was using a making it for a shield for combat maybe something a little bit stronger um, the consistency might be a little too thick too I don't know they say it should run off like maple syrup um, I don't know it's my first time using it so as long as it's not a total disaster I'll be happy So I'm, I'm applying it to both surfaces, also because it sticks to itself. Oh yeah, I'm sure I'm going to have lots of uh, wax paper stuck to this, but you know what? That's okay, I'll deal with that. And the boards don't exactly meet up, so I'm just going to kind of fill in those gaps with glue. All right, so now that that's good, I'm gonna use my highly sophisticated clamping system. It's just up against the blocks for my vise up there. And we're just gonna put some pressure on and pop these screws in. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm also going to fill these holes with a little bit of the sawdust remnants and some of the hide glue. Um, I'm not gonna film that though. All right, cool, first time using hide glue. All right, so it's been about 24 hours since uh, I did this glue up. Obviously, you can see where I was really sloppy. Um, there's also some little places where there's this uh, kind of interesting little, very, very fine film, which I'm pretty sure is from the glue because it's too thin to be wax paper. There are a couple little spots of wax paper sticking, but no big deal. So I just made this uh, very, 
advanced compass here, and I'm going for a radius of 16 centimeters uh, to get a diameter of um, 320 mil. That's what I'm shooting for. So now I'm just going to put the pencil in and scribe this line. All right, so now I'm gonna grab the jigsaw and cut this shape out. So I am giving myself the one uh, modern convenience of a jigsaw to cut this shape out. So let's get, let's keep cracking. Obviously there's some cleanup to do, but uh, I'm, this is starting to look like a buckler. So now I'm thinning down the edge of the buckler uh, to about four millimeters. Sometimes I hear people talking about even like two or three, but I'm going to four millimeters and I'm just using a rasp right now. And um, I kind of changed the angles, so I'll kind of start at uh, a steeper angle like this and go around, but then I'll uh, change to somewhere in between, and eventually I go around and do it almost, like, pretty much as flat as I can. And I just kind of try to blend those angles while I'm going around doing that. So it's about 10 millimeters thick in the center and about four millimeters thick at the edges. Um, and this is already making a difference in the weight and also just how it feels. I know I don't have a handle on it yet, but it already feels like it will be uh, much more maneuverable than with the edges being at the full thickness. And uh, to finish off, what I have been doing that's been working pretty well is actually taking this tile that I use to like usually tape some sandpaper too to sharpen uh, some small utility blades and stuff like that and I just put the sandpaper over the tile like this it's pretty much like a sanding block but I kind of like this because it's uh, I know it's flat and it's also got a little bit of weight to it so uh, I'll probably go around the edge after I've done kind of the surface in circles or with the grain or whatever um, before I paint uh, I will probably go down to this 320, so that was 120, that's just what I'll mostly use, but before I paint, I'm probably going to go down to this 320. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to go around this edge and get the whole thing down to 4 mil thick.